Ichthyosaurus curiosa is a comparatively small carnivore found in the waters around the island. It is slightly larger than a human, but that's still small compared to the leviathans roaming these waters. It seems to be very interested in any creature around its size, often approaching and following humans swimming through its waters. Despite its appearance, the Ichthyosaurus is neither a fish nor an ocean mammal. Like many creatures in the waters around the island, it is actually an aquatic reptile. I can't think of a better mount for someone starting to explore the island seas and waterways. Ichthyosaurus is a comparatively fast swimmer, and even in the wild, will cozy right up to you and try to figure out what you're doing. Taming these is actually pretty easy, as they seem to love humans and will be fed and tamed without the use of violence. One of the stranger creatures in the waters surrounding the island is Basilosaurus salatium facit. It's a powerful swimmer, which is adapted to the shallows so remarkably well that it rapidly recovers from injuries when near the water's surface. Conversely, it's vulnerable to deep water pressure, which slowly causes it harm. Basilosaurus is usually closely followed by other predatory creatures, as its eating habits leave plenty of scraps for scavengers to consume. It is a gentle creature towards humans and happily laps up food directly from them. However, the creatures that trail the Bazi tend to become dangerously enraged whenever this occurs, as it leaves no leftovers for them. Despite the hassle of engaging with its ornery followers, many tribes still attempt to tame the Basilosaurus, as its mammalian, warm-blooded circulation provides a rider with perfect comfort from both heat and cold. Being apprehensive in nature, Basilosaurus is equipped with a defence mechanism that prevents it from being stunned or shocked. Alternatively, Basilosaurus is hunted, perhaps too vigorously, for its special blubber, which can be efficiently refined into gasoline. Leedsichthys convivi is probably the largest fish in the waters around the island. Its meat is also extremely succulent, a surprise given its size. It is often traded with the same value as prime meat and colloquially called prime fish. Of course, not all Leedsichthys meat is this high quality, but most of it is. While the demand for Leedsichthys meat is high, the fish is notoriously difficult to track and hunt. Between its large size, powerful attacks, incredible speed when it turns to flee, and humankind's general ineptitude on open water, actually killing a lead Sixthus is one of the island's more difficult tasks. The hunt for an extremely elusive breed of the fish, the fabled great albino lead Sixthus, has been known to drive otherwise sensible men and women mad with obsession as if all evil were visibly personified and made practically assailable in this one creature. Despite its large size and the fact that it may well be strong enough to carry heavy loads, Lead Sixthus does not appear to be intelligent enough to tame. Nevertheless, some large tribes keep an enormous pen with a few lead sixthus trapped inside for cultivating purposes, 
as bits of prime fish can be repeatedly scraped off the gargantuan beast without killing it. Were it not restricted to the waters, Carcharodon ultramegalodon would be one of the most dangerous creatures on the island. As powerful and dangerous as the Tyrannosaurus is on land, Megalodon is near its equal in the water. In addition, it has a speed advantage over any non-aquatic creature when submerged. Megalodons need large quantities of food to sustain themselves. So, they attack most creatures immediately on sight. Smaller fish are the sole exception I've seen. I believe this is because they cost more energy for megalodons to catch than the predator would gain. Having access to the resources and treasures hidden deep within the ocean is near impossible without a domesticated sea creature. The megalodon, though difficult to domesticate, proves to be very useful when exploring the deep sea. It's not the most efficient swimmer, but it should be able to protect your cargo should you find yourself in a hostile encounter. Leopleurodon magicus is a mid-sized ocean creature, typically between 20 and 25 feet long. I've yet to directly encounter one myself, but from the tales other tribes have shared, it compares to no other on the island. The rumours indicate that this beautiful creature has magical properties. However, the sightings are so rare, it's hard to decipher old tribes' tales from the underlying truth. They say that Leopleurodon is an elusive creature that can harness its magical powers to retreat from predators or aggressors of any kind. But the beekeeping tribes claim that their honey is so sweet that not even the Leopleurodon could resist. Leopleurodon is rumoured to bring good fortune to those adventurous enough to tame it. With the Leopleurodon by their side, tribes have apparently managed to obtain treasure beyond their wildest dreams. Supposedly, even after you've gained its favour, it remains incredibly aloof and will eventually use its abilities to escape even the strictest of captivity. Occupying a space in the low to middle end of the food chain, Electrophorus belloa domito is a carnivorous swimmer that feeds mostly off of shellfish and small fish. Despite its common name, it is actually a very long knife fish, and not an eel. It does not provide much meat, so many predators simply leave it be. Unlike most predators, it does not use brute strength to bring down its prey, but instead releases an electrical charge around itself to knock its prey unconscious. Alone, this can take out a small creature. When attacking together, electrophorus can even bring down the larger ocean life forms and then feed as a group. By far the most common use of electrophorus is to subdue large ocean creatures. Knocking out a plesiosaur or other giant deep sea leviathan can be incredibly difficult. Thus many tribes employ small schools of electrophorus to shock them into submission. Nidaria omnimorph is another example of a creature which should not exist. It has traits that seem derived from many types of jellyfish. It possesses the size and shape of large egg yolk jellies, the powerful sting of certain box jellies, and the bioluminescence of deep sea jellies. This all combines to make a dangerous creature that lights up the deepest reaches of the ocean. Nidaria is not generally aggressive, 
because it lacks normal perceptive senses. It generally just floats along on the current until something gets close enough to sense, at which point it attacks. While its attacks are not directly powerful, its sting injects an incredibly strong and fast-acting sedative. As Nidaria is barely more intelligent than a plant, there's no effective method to tame one. Most tribes kill Nidaria on sight, then collect its reserve of powerful sedative to use in technically advanced, long-distance tranquilizers. Until recently, I believed the Megalodon to be the greatest of the ocean predators. Then I discovered Mosasaurus suspirita in the deeps. Not quite as fast, but much larger and stronger, the Mosasaurus rules the darkest waters off the island. Growing up to 15 metres long, Mosasaurus is larger than almost every other aquatic creature I've encountered thus far. Mosasaurus is a deep-sea marine lizard, which spends all of its time far beneath the water's surface. It is without a doubt one of the most fearsome creatures of the island, and can certainly be considered among the ocean's apex predators. Mosasaurus has proven to be an excellent tame for the most advanced tribes. <laughs> Due to its sheer size and power, you will often find tribes with bases and defences built upon a Mosasaur's large platform saddle. Having one with you as an escort is probably one of the best oceanic defences available. Elasmosaurus remus pisa is typically found in the deep oceans and has a strange role in the oceanic food chain. It almost exclusively hunts the smaller creatures in the waters, leaving most even moderately large creatures alone. The sheer size of the Elasmosaurus means that the quantity of food it must eat to sustain itself is nothing short of enormous. Elasmosaurus is a formidable fighter. Aside from the Megalodon, I have only ever seen two creatures bring down an Elasmosaurus, a Mosasaurus and human beings. Though I will admit, I have yet to thoroughly explore the staggeringly deep underwater caverns surrounding the island. Much like the Brontosaurus on land, Elasmosaurus is an excellent way to transport large quantities of goods over water. Yeah! These powerful creatures are in fact so large that they can be used as mobile water bases. Ambitious tribes sometimes build bunkers right onto the backs of Elasmosaurus instead of building cargo ships. Duncleosteus loricorrupta is a very strange creature. It is a fairly large fish, covered head to tail in armoured plates with incredibly powerful jaws. It tends to eat the island's water-dwelling crustaceans trawling the seabed, as it is not fast enough to catch most of the smaller fish. Dunkleosteus is surprisingly combat-oriented for a fish. Its well-armoured body protects it from many creatures, while its bite is strong enough to easily crush through chitinous shells. Dunkleosteus is an incredibly useful fish for coastal communities, its powerful jaws make short work of the stone and oil formations found throughout the oceanic depths. While harvesting, Dunkleosteus can defend its rider from all but the largest threats in the waters, and once it is past its prime, the Dunkleosteus itself can be harvested for a fair amount of chitin. 
Whether its size is caused by adaptation to the island's other inhabitants or by crossbreeding with another larger species, Milanocetus anglopescum is the largest form of anglerfish I've ever heard of. Typically found among the deepest, darkest expanses of the ocean, this creature preys on smaller fish while being an excellent source of food for larger predators. Milanocetus has an array of bioluminescent light pods at the end of stalks on its head. Like typical anglerfish, it primarily uses these to attract smaller creatures and trick them into coming close enough for Milanocetus to consume the prey. This often makes wild Milanocetus itself relatively easy to spot among the briny depths. Exploring the depths of the ocean can be difficult. The cold, the lack of air, and the shocking absence of light combined to make travel very dangerous. A tamed anglerfish can use the natural light at the end of its stalks to illuminate the depths, making exploration not only safer, but more lucrative. As I've heard, some survivors use this creature to harvest the silica pearls found throughout the ocean's depths. Tuso this vampiris is a very aggressive water predator. Approximately nine meters long, Tuso Teuthis is a terror of the deep. Once it grabs its prey, it slowly crushes it into submission while using the talons on its tentacles to siphon and drink the victim's blood. Tuso Teuthis is a terrifying opponent for several reasons. Firstly, its grab slowly renders its victim unconscious, so death isn't the only concern. Secondly, its vampiric blood drain instantly revitalizes it, even during combat. Finally, if Tuso Teuthis is losing the fight, it sprays a cloud of ink into the surrounding water, blinding its attackers to cover a sneaky escape. One of the major benefits of taming Tuso Teuthis is harvesting its ink. Unlike normal ink, Tuso Teuthis ink is very oily and can even be refined into fuels such as gasoline. Between that and Tuso Teuthis' distinct capability to grab and carry large creatures underwater, it makes for an excellent aquatic tame, despite its slower speed. Usually found in the deepest parts of the water around the island, Ammonitina multiamicus has a strange relationship with the other creatures of the deep. It must do something beneficial for them, since every nearby sea creature defends Ammonitina when it is attacked. What this distinct symbiosis is based on, alas, I have not yet discovered. Ammonitina has also made its way into the deeper parts of many underwater caves. Even within these caves, the creature will draw attention if assaulted, making harvesting its resource-rich shell a tricky proposition, depending on what other dangers may be lurking nearby. Like many of the untamable ocean dwellers, Ammonitina still has enough utility to be a valuable hunting target. If a tribe is willing to risk the wrath of nearby would-be protectors, Ammonitina bile can be harvested from the innards of its corpse. This bile can then be worked over with other chemicals to produce powerful concoctions, the most notable being a mixture that causes creatures to become enraged and attack the source of the scent. <laughs> Found only in the deepest depths of the waters around the island, Eurypterids are dangerous and adaptable arthropods. As likely to hunt as they are to scavenge, a Eurypterid rarely has difficulty finding food to keep itself nourished, even at the bottom of the ocean. A Eurypterid's threat comes not directly from its raw strength. Instead, it combines a hard defensive exoskeleton with debilitating poison to powerful effect. The sting of a Eurypterid increases torpor while reducing stamina, quickly rendering its opponent unable to defend itself. 
While Eurypterids are not intelligent enough to be tamed, this doesn't mean they are without utility to tribes. They are a wonderful source of chitin, and their digestive tract often contains silicate pearls. They sometimes even have ingested incredibly rare black pearls, used by survivors for advanced manufacturing, making them among the most valuable creatures on the island. 